Hey YouTubers, if you're anything like me and you just bought a knee mill and you don't have free phase power, this video is for you. So what I'm going to show you how to do is how to run your three phase uh, milling machine or knee mill or actually any three phase machine, um, five horsepower and below. I'm going to show you how to run it off of 220 volt single phase power. All right, so my knee mill has off forward and reverse. So I want the same functions. I do not want something like this where I have to turn it on and then select the direction and then adjust the speed. Now you can do this with a VFD, but that's not what I want because when I'm tapping, I want to be on forward, go to off, wait for it to stop and then go reverse, right? I don't want to have to hit a whole bunch of different buttons and change speeds. So now if you have a um, the step pulley where you have to actually physically change pulleys, then yeah, it might be nice to have that potentiometer and just, and then adjust the speed. But because I have this, uh, fancy, uh, speed control here, I want my motor running at the full 1750 RPMs, um, when I'm turning, what, uh, I don't know how low it goes, um, <laughs> It goes really low. Let's just say the gear ratio goes really, really, really high. And at the lowest RPMs, I have a stupid amount of torque. And I want to keep that. I do not want to turn the motor down. I want to adjust um, the transmission here um, in order to get my low speeds. So if you don't have this, if you just have something like this, a single speed, then of course you'll want to actually adjust the motor and not the gear ratios. So you can do both. But I want to do this. Um, you have to hook that up like this. So uh, I've got 220 volts single phase power. And you'll notice I have UVW. Um, and they're, you know, going like this. And then X, Y, and Z are connected to each other. Now for high voltage, X, Y, and Z are not connected to each other. They're connected straight down in that configuration. So when you look up here inside, you will notice um, this is already set up for 220 volts. So basically, these are jumpered together, just like that diagram showed, and then these are jumpered together. So the thing is, I need to figure out, you know, which one I'm going to hook to here, here, and here. So I've kind of already determined that, and I uh, put tape on these so I can keep track of which ones I'm going to put where. And I use uh, a little tester um, to check continuity between this end and the other end. So on the other end, I also put um, little pieces of tape so I can make sure that I remember. Now. Worst case scenario, if I get one of these flipped, it's not going to hurt anything. It's just going to make everything go backwards. So forward will be reverse and reverse will be forward. But I want to start out um, <laughs> with it, you know, correct. And then if it turns out my RPMs are reading negative instead of positive, I will simply switch um, two of these. So anyways, um, this is an Invertec. Um, really high quality industrial grade um, VFD. These things are sold worldwide. Invertec is one of the most reputable in, uh, VFD companies out there. They've manufactured their own. They've manufactured for lots and lots of other VFD companies who didn't have the ability to manufacture. So Invertec drives, really great drives. If you want one of these, check the link in the description below. I can hook you up with the best prices in America on these drives. Anyways, back to how we're going to wire this. So it's what we're going to do. We're just going to hook up U, V, and W to U, V, and W. And then L1, L2. L3 is blocked off because this is not three-phase. And then we've got a grounding lug here and a grounding lug there. So this is like crazy simple. All you got to do, U, V, W, U, V, W. You've got a ground. L1 and L2, L1 and L2. I mean, it's literally spelled out. You can't mess it up. Then for the signal wires, that um, I will show you how to do. We're gonna utilize 
um, one, two, and three. So if I connect jumpers one and two, that turns it on and puts it in forward. If I then jumper three into these two and connect all three of them, that switches directions. All right, so these are, this is going to be the main switch on the front of the mill that I use to uh, select forward, off, and reverse. So I picked this up at Automation Direct. Uh, part number will be in the description below. This is also picked up at Automation Direct. Now, the uh, this black part is the switch that you buy from Automation Direct, and then these contacts are sold separately, also from Automation Direct. Now the green ones are normally open. That means they're open until you flip the switch, and then it closes the contact. Now these things can stack on top of each other. Um, so they have this little screw right here, and you just take one of these modules and you slide it onto the one below, and you can, there's no limit to how many, except for the depth of maybe your box. So, is what we're gonna do, in order to make this work, we'll put this through the hole, and we'll put this in the back, and then it clicks into place. So you have the top part that moves like this, and then if you grab onto the body, it's a twist lock, and it comes out. So basically, you have these plungers in here that activate the two different sides of the switch. So, for us to get forward, we need pins one and two to touch together. For us to get reverse, we need pins one, two, and three. So, the only way you can achieve that is I'm going to call this the input side and this the output side. Now, you could go the other direction, but this is just how I'm going to describe it. So, I'm going to have pin one coming in here, and then I'm going to use jumpers. I'm going to have two jumpers. One will go to here like that, and then another jumper will go down here. So everything on this side will be connected to pin one on the VFD um, inputs. Now, on this side, um, I'm going to have pin two here. This will be connected to pin two on the VFD. So when I put this thing like that, I'm connecting pins one and two because those are both on this channel over here. So now in the middle, nothing's connected. No signal is passing through this switch. So then when I flip it this direction, because both of these are going to be jumped together as pin 1, I'll have pin 2 here and pin 3 here. So now I'm connecting pins 1, 2, and 3 all together at the same time. That kicks it into reverse. So that's how you're going to wire um, your switch that's going to mount on your mill. And that's how you achieve forward, off, reverse. So this goes to the motor, this comes from the power to the wall, this is a signal. These are all the ins and outs. This is your um, port to plug in your Bluetooth control if you want to control the thing with your phone. But overall, we're going to mount that. And normally I always, always, always tell people never run one of these without a set of fuses because that is your insurance policy see, to keep this thing from burning up, say you short something out. But I don't have any fuse. Well, I have the fuses, but I don't have a box or anything. I will put that in install fuses um, in the future, but that's not going to be part of this video. Basically, you just cut this and you run it into a single gang box. And the L1 and L2 are fused and the ground just passes through. And um, so that's what you do. And it's not, do not use the breaker on the wall. It is not sufficient. Mine's back over there. Okay, so now you can see I have this wire right here, which you probably can't read it, but it's labeled 1. And so that's powering all the terminals, all the switches here. Um, and then I've got this wire here, which I don't know if you can see that it says 2. So that's coming into this side right here. So if I go like this, now pins 1 and 2 are touching which is forward. That's nothing. Nothing's connected at all. Now it's stopped. And now it's still connected to pin 2 because I got that jumped together. But now I'm also connecting line 3 into 1. So all three are connected, which switches the direction. So you've got forward, off, and reverse. Um, so that is fully terminated. I'm going to go ahead and tape these off because I'm not going to wire up the potentiometer, but just in case, I did run the wires to this box. So that's all covered, all wired up, ready to go. 
in here we've got one two three and uh five six seven for a pot and then a ground if i need it up there i've got uvw going here i've got l1 and l2 um, right here and um all i have to do is hook up u v and w to uvw and that is called out right here so i'm doing 220 volts so i'm doing the diagram on the left so that's kind of how it's it's terminated um so just gotta wire that up and i will have full control just like the factory um when you run this thing you won't notice any difference it's going to have the full three horsepower and it's going to be running off of single phase power and this guy right here is less than half the price of a rotary phase converter and it's going to give you super clean power um with no noise um it has low torque boost it has all kinds of safeties to protect the motor it has auto tune so you can run the motor and it will match itself to the specific windings of the motor i mean this is going to be a lot better than a rotary phase converter i know a lot of guys say don't believe that but that's the truth this is going to be cleaner power going to this with more protections than a rotary phase converter um, can provide for this setup. Now, why do people use rotary phase converters? Because when you go larger, um, like five horsepower, seven horsepower, 10 horsepower, and you're trying to convert single phase, um, you literally, you're going to run out of amperage at some point. I only have two um, lines of 120 volts going in here at a maximum of 25 amps a piece right so if i want to generate you know um the, uh, a ton of horsepower coming out of this in three phase um i would really need that extra third leg of extra voltage otherwise the amperage um draw on the input line would just be astronomical so you are limited you know on how big you can go when you're converting from single phase to three phase so three horsepower and below absolutely go with a vfd it's more efficient it's cleaner power it's safer um, for this and it's cheaper i don't there's no downsides and you don't have some rotary phase converter over in the corner running constantly just taking power even when you don't need the mill so wrap this all up if you're doing three horsepower or less vfd if you're gonna do a ton just try to find a building with three phase power <laughs> anyways thanks for watching guys nah i'm not gonna quit here i'm gonna power it up and let you see it run and this is how you wire the plug just like that all right as promised you can see right there we are powered up and uh I've already been doing some milling. This thing is beautiful. I've never gotten that kind of surface finish before with that guy. Anyways, my ADD's kicking in. Here we go. Moment of truth. that's forward and reverse she's all up and running so how to program your vfd to make that happen it's super easy now i have an entire video on how to program your invertech drive so this is going to be extremely brief but really doesn't take that long you hold this button down all of a sudden it says parameters you see p1 so you basically you take your motor nameplate information and these are the only parameters you have to set so you have, you know, P1, 2, 3, 4. I just talked about um, stop mode, which was um, 5. You can let it ramp, which is that parameter 4, or you can let it coast. Uh, energy optimization, no, don't use that. Um, rated voltage, 
current frequency, speed, torque boost. Oh, that was at two and a half. So I'm giving it a little bit of torque boost. Um, if you go too much, you'll just you'll be kicking your um, VFD into protect mode, thermal protect, if you turn that up too high. Um, terminal keypad versus uh, the keypad is the buttons. You want it to be on terminal control. That would be your switch that you have wired up. Um, 13, uh, you want it to be on industrial. You don't want pump or fan, so I have that set. And parameter 14, you've set that to 201 or uh, 101, you open up a ton of advanced features. One of the advanced features is the auto-tune, which I actually, the first time I actually ran an auto-tune, it's really cool. So what it does, it basically analyzes the motor windings and it finds the exact impedance um, for the start. So that way, it optimizes the settings in the VFD to perfectly match the unique fingerprint that your motor has that you know every motor is wound you know slightly different so this VFD will auto tune itself to perfectly match your rotary phase converter ain't going to do that so anyways if you have any questions leave them in the comment section below for the links to the buttons and stuff all that stuff the Amazon links or the links to the, uh, my website for the VFD all that's in the description below thanks so much for watching guys I'll see you next time